And we would pair up, and we would go to this corner and this corner and that corner, and we would surround it. Now, Chime Street is the Bourbon Street of Baton Rouge. You will get your witnessing shoes on and hope you have some anointing. If you ever go there witnessing, you will get sharpened right there. They, uh, people manifest devils. They're Satanists. Some of those bar rooms are Satanists that own it. One of them's called Ichabods. We witnessed to a girl and handed her a track, and she went into that bar and got up dancing on the stage and fell down and broke her neck and died that night. And they shut it down for a while. Serious spiritual atmosphere over there. And they paired off, and, and the, the, one of my young buddies, he was a youth pastor at, in reserve, and he had the, the Baptist boy with him. Now, I'm not trying to pick on anybody's denomination, but I, what I, wanted, I just want to get you all to understand something. A man manifested some demons, and the Baptist went, ah, and ran. They were only in the first stage of anointing. Hallelujah. Okay, when you are in first stage of anointing, you're still a child. You will live in fear, you'll hide in caves, and you'll run from the devil. That's what happened to David. It's not enough to just hold on to the first stage of anointing. We must go on to the second. You see, the very minute David was anointed with the second stage of anointing, in the second anointing, it says there was war between Saul and David. My friends, the second stage of anointing brings you into the battlefield. I tell you what, you'll begin to grow a backbone like a saw log, and you'll stand up and you'll point your finger under the nose of the devil and tell him, we're not playing at this thing. We're the born-again, fire-baptized, elect church of God, and I'm not just about ready to back up for you. You will get tired of what he's doing to your teenagers. You'll get tired of what he's doing in your life, to your finances, and everything around you when you go into the second stage of anointing. You won't want to hide in a cave anymore. You will begin to say, I'm through running, I'm through hiding, I'm going to face the enemy and dismantle his kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says in 1 John 3, 8, this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the enemy. What happened? We learned about destroy this morning. When it's destroyed, it's broke. I tell you what, the enemy's work in my life is destroyed. It cannot be fixed anymore. Cocaine, alcohol, marijuana, all this stuff cannot be fixed anymore because the, the anointing destroyed it. The anointing destroys the yoke. Hallelujah. Elijah and Elisha. We're going we're gonna to look at this one right now. Elijah represents the first stage of anointing. <clears throat> Some of you may have forgotten what, El what God said to Elijah in Horeb. He's in Horeb running from Jezebel. Now, he, now, there are some devils you cannot defeat under the first stage of anointing. Even though you're saved and, and, and your name is in the book of life, there are some devils you can't defeat under the first stage of anointing. He was under a heavy mantle from God. He, he could call fire down from heaven. He could see the prophets of Baal dead, but it was still the first stage of anointing. The second stage did not belong to Elijah. He goes down to Horeb, and he's, he's, he's running from Jezebel, and he says, Where are you, Lord? I'm the only one that's left. God says, Where are you? Go back over there. And anoint Elisha to do the ministry. And, he, and then God makes this statement. And he says in 1 Kings 19, 17. He says, It shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Hazael shall Jehu slay. And him, him that escapeth the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. The reason God could trust Elisha with the second stage of anointing was because he was a warrior. He knew how to use a sword. When Elijah comes and places the mantle on him, he was already called. He, he, he wasn't a man accustomed to running. He was accustomed to fighting. 
I was thinking about this boy, and I, and I heard a song start playing. It says, uh, anointed boy can't survive. He says, because you can't stop them out, and you can't make us run, because these here old boys raised on God's word. We say grace. We say ma'am. If the devil gets in my face, he's going to get a slam. <laughs> I tell you what, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> According to Josephus, Elisha knew Elijah for 10 years. They had worked off and on together for about 10 years. And he was already anointed. He was one of Elijah's servants already. He had already received the first mantle. Now Elijah comes and places another mantle on him representing his office and, and that he was his predecessor and that he would come behind him, his office and his authority and his personality and things like that. But remember, there was another mantle that came from the chariot. That represents the third stage of anointing. Hallelujah. When he came and he, he gave Elijah, gave him the, the second mantle, he was plowing. He was what? Plowing. What was he doing? He was plowing. What were they doing in the upper room, the 120? They was, they was praying. They was plowing. Praying is plowing. Therefore, prayer brings you into the second stage of anointing. Prayer and devotion to God and spending time with God is what brings you into the second stage of anointing. As a covenant purpose... With better promises, we have a legal right to the anointing, which is one of those promises, and no devil can stop us from getting it. They can't avoid, they can't stop us from getting it. Observe that there are limits and boundaries to the effectiveness of each stage. It is one stage has a limit. S second stage has a limit. But the third stage has no limits. Whenever you can be trusted, whenever I can be trusted with the third stage of anointing, there is no limit to that one. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Man, I tell you what, how, how good would it be to have no limit of anointing? Glory to God. The second stage of anointing, you will be tested. It's nothing and you're a baby when you get stage one. But you will begin getting tested. And the first test is uh, where... Elijah told Elisha, you stay here, I'm going. And he said, no, and he followed him. He, and, and he kept on doing this. And Gilgal, that represents faith. And Bethel, that represents decision. And then Jericho is war. And I'm not going to go into all these. These are some other things you're going to have to request to Brother Steve or somebody if you want to hear the rest of it. But uh, remember that. You're going to be tested. The last one is Jordan, and that's where Elijah said, what do you want now? And he said, a double portion. That's when he got that, that third stage of anointing. Right. Now, if we're going to have a text, this is going to be it. And we're going we're gonna to go in another area for a second here. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 1, 1 through 3. Let's read it all together, please. Everybody there? Ready? Read. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Okay, now, let's, uh, that is a powerful scripture. We can't afford to just look at that and then forget about it. Does anybody remember when Brother Steve preached on the blessing? Okay, and first of all, I want to mention that it's written to the faithful right there. Okay. Um, that's another point that we'll, you'll check it out on YouTube, but I kind of shell some corn on that one right there. We're going to be a little bit reserved on that tonight. But one of the meanings is firmly planted. 
In other words, you got to be firmly planted. You could be, if you're jumping from here and there and going to church in all these different areas and you're not faithful with where you're going and where you're at, your, your faithfulness to God is really questionable also. Maybe um, we have defined the blessing as God's endued power. 